Hey there, Riverica here, reporting for duty on a trigger. Thank you so much for shuffling states of emergency into adoption spirit magic with me and steering clear of danger. Heartily, we are grateful. In this session, we are seeing what the sun moving into Pisces has to tell us about how to move forward, minding our business in the highest love and light. But before that, some disclaimers. I am not a doctor, lawyer, therapist. I'm a fortune teller. So what I offer is no substitute for their services. Furthermore, what I share does not determine your future. Only your intentions and actions do. So please use your gift of discernment before deciding what to gather and take away from this reading. And also, of course, take only what resonates and blow like a kiss the rest to the universe for cosmic composting back into beauty. Heartily, we are grateful. And this reading is for fun and games, for shits and giggles, for entertainment, for flexing our heart and intuition, our mind, our soul, our spirit, and at the least, I hope to cause harm to none. And at the most, I hope to help you on your healing path. All that being said, let me introduce our helpers. I have lit candles for Source, Mother Earth, Father Sky, the homeless, those that kick them out of their homes, the neighbors, the passers-by, even those working against our spiritual progression. I have also lit candles for Harmony, Unity, and Balance, Archangel Azrael, our ancestors here in the highest love and light, and those who have crossed over to Father Sky by suicide, and the family and friends they left behind on Mother Earth, as well as the war-torn families, nations, and galaxies. And we thank Source for helping us all adopt success, transmuting these violent cycles into love. Heartily, we are grateful. I also have here helping us my mini crystal ball, my wooden dice, my wooden dagger wand, my other wooden wand to help lift our spirits and cut to the heart of the matter without harming a soul. I have sage, which I've cleared the space already, and the Tibetan bell kit to clear the space with you after we introduce these cards. And we have six decks of cards. And the first deck, Pile 1, is the Paragrams by Paramahansa Yogananda, published by the Self-Realization Fellowship. And if you enjoy reading these cards, I invite you to procure your own deck of cards, because I am prohibited by copyright from transcribing them if they come up in our reading today. And you can find those online at the Self-Realization Fellowship, www.yogananda.com hyphen srf.org or maybe you are blessed enough to be in Los Angeles and you can visit the center at the end of Sunset Boulevard it's almost overlooking the Pacific Ocean and you can visit the temple take in a service walk around the pond the beautiful pond with so much beautiful flora and fauna and some of Gandhi's ashes are there along with the beautiful memorial and you can also pick up these cards for yourself. And on this deck of cards, we have the garnet. And this is in the shape of a rhombic dodecahedron. Beautiful symbology you can check out for yourself and see what resonates for you for the shape, for the gemstone. And this is a deep, deep red. And if I was to give it one word, I'd say grounding. But you might discover something different after you check out four or five or six different sites to understand more about this garnet or the rhombic dodecahedron. And pile number two is the Tree Angel Oracle, the Ancient Path into the Sacred Grove by Fred Hageneder and illustrated by An Heng. And that was published by Earth Dancer and Inner Traditions Imprint. And the crystal we have on top of that is this beautiful twin quartz. 
which is beautiful for so many things. Again, I invite you to check out four or five or six different sites on your own to see what resonates with you. Um, but this Twin Quartz, I might say off the top of my head, it helps us with our mother issues. We all have mothers. Some of us have multiple mothers between our birth mothers, adopted mothers, in-law mothers. Some of us are mothers. Some of us are treated like mothers. So this helps with all of that and helps us be our own mother, to mother ourselves, like we imagine the Divine Ma does. Like we know the Divine Ma does. So that's that twin crystal quartz. In pile three, we have the Cosmic Dancer Oracle by Sedona Soulfire and Tess Whitehurst, published by Blue Angel Publishing. And on that, we have this lovely rainbow fluorite point obelisk. Helps with your bones. I want to say your immune system as well. But of course, check for yourself because we are all different psychosocial science experiments and what resonates for you may be different than what I'm sharing with you, what resonates with me. So that is the rainbow fluorite. And then pile number four, we have the Cali Oracle by Alana Fairchild and illustrated by Jimmy Manton. And this is also published by Blue Angel Publishing. And the crystal we have on that is this green calcite, which really is lovely for your heart chakra. I'm also getting forgiveness right now with it. It's so soothing, isn't it? You can leave comments below about how each of these crystals resonates with you. So that's that green calcite. And then pile five, we have the Sacred Geometry Activations Oracle by Lon. And this is published by Beyond Words. We have the lovely Labradite. It's sort of challenging to see, but there's, can you see the blue and yellow glimmers in that? But then you see the dark, such a lovely, there it is, that blue. It's like Aurora Borealis. And rumor has it that this gemstone was found in between Finland and Russia during World War I. Not this one in particular, but Labradite in particular. So it was found by soldiers during wartime and it was just so lovely for them to find. It just gave them hope again. But this is a lovely transformation stone. But again, I invite you to check out on your own what resonates with you for each of these. And then deck number six, we have the Living Altar by Kiki Robinson and Ilva Droma Marzana Radzesuski, and the Living Altar is an oracle and spell deck for the Radical Witch. And this was published in the People's Republic of China. And the crystal we have with this is the lovely Smoky Quartz. Point. It's wonderful for detox and so many other things. Quadruple check. Five, six, seven different sources. See what resonates with you for each of these. All right, so I want to invite you to help me clear the space and hold the intention of love and only love we shall see. And I shall sage our space with your help. Thank you so much. Heartily, we are grateful.
thank you so much for being here with us in this session today. Heartily, we are grateful. Thank you. And I would enjoy doing the bell mantra and ringing the bell with you, but please adjust your ears so they remain safe because when I ring this, there's going to be a loud sound. So here we go. Mind, body, speech, and perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. May hearers awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. Om. Peace. Shanti. Thank you so much. So now, let's get with this reading. See what the sun moving into Pisces has to tell us about how to mind our business in the highest love and light. This is so exciting. Sun shedding some warmth, shedding some light. Thank you for guiding us in the highest love and light. Number six. Awesome. So we have the Living Altar, an oracle and spell deck for the Radical Witch by Kiki Robinson and Ilvadroma Marzana Radzisuski. That is going to help us understand what the sun moving into Pisces has to tell us about how to move forward, minding our business in the highest love and light. Here's that smoky quartz. There we are. Let's do that. There we are. You know, Pisces is so dreamy. There's so much associated with Pisces. You Pisces know that. You know, that symbol. I'm thinking of the symbol right now and how part of it's the fish symbology, not the actual symbol. And how there's fish going up and a fish going down. And that's kind of like our heart chakra. There's a triangle going up and a triangle going down. And together they make a star. And we have a choice. Are we going to go up with whatever's happening? Or are we going to go down? And uh, so let's see what the sun has to tell us about moving into Pisces. How to move forward, minding our business in the highest love and light. And you are a whole, full, loving powerful spiritual being and so am I we thank your source and spirit guides and angels galaxy guides ancestors saints and sages gods and goddesses universes here for the highest love and light as well as mine and we thank your source and my source for shifting the situations into what they need to be right now, offering necessary insights, healings, acts of grace, protection. Heartily, we are grateful. So it was, and so it was, and so it was, and so it was, so it was. Thank you, Spirit Team, for guiding this reading in the highest level of light, making it abundantly clear. What the sun has to tell us about how to move forward, minding our business in the highest love and light. Cut the cards. Thank you. I have a feeling I need to do this for a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Keeping it together, keep it together, keep it together. Thank you. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. 
God bless it. God bless it. So let's see what the sun has to tell us. It says adult. Adult team. What a beautiful card. It's reminding me you can check out Kiki and Ilva's podcast, Alters Up Witches. To learn more about them and this deck, you can also find them on Instagram at The Living Altar. You can also hear the Halloween editions episodes of the Romanistan podcast hosted by Paulina Verminski and Jessica Reedy, where they have Ilva and Kiki on as guests and they tell the spooky story behind these cards. It's so awesome. Mm -hmm. And these cards are beautiful. I'm thrilled to have them. They're one of the only Romani decks in circulation right now. And so this one has a lot of green in it, bringing up everything that green does. Off the top of my head, I can say our heart chakra. And it's also giving me this spring energy. As we're moving into spring, that makes sense. And you see also there's some red. It looks like red stitching with red thread. And then it could be some other source of red. And it looks like there might be rose petal and some evergreen. It might be rosemary, but adult. What a beautiful, beautiful card. So I'm going to read to you about this card. And there's three parts. The Witch's Wheel Correspondence, which I invite you Maybe it would be interesting for you and fun for you to make your own witch's wheel after researching four or five or six or 27 different witch's wheels and then creating your own. So the first part of this reading is the witch's wheel correspondence. And the second part of this reading is the spell. And then the third part of this reading is the guided message. So you can settle in for that. And the spell... I invite you to say as many times as you enjoy or that feels correct for you. In past sessions on this channel, I've been saying the spell four times. But I'm not sure if that's what's what shall unfold in this session. Time shall tell. I know, relatively soon, right? Okay, so adult. The Witch's Wheel Correspondence. There's about eight or nine words. Water, autumn, west, sunset, abundance, disseminating moon, expression, council, ancestor, and initiation. Ten, ten words. And counsel, as I was shuffling, came out to me. And ancestor did as well. And you can vibe on those yourself to see what that brings up for you. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm reading the spell. I'm reading ahead already. So here's the spell. Pedal to the metal, bitches. We are in our sacred work now. I have built this temple of blood and bone. I have learned to trust my boundaries, and so I am now prepared to share my heartfelt purpose. I know what to share with the world around me, what to keep close except for a trusted few, and what should remain intimate and private. I expand my worldview to better understand how my work weaves into the greater collective. I am applying the power of lessons learned and am putting faith in my own grace. I'm going to read that three more times. Pedal to the metal, bitches. We are in our sacred work now. I have built this temple of blood and bone. I have learned to trust my boundaries, and so I am now prepared to share my heartfelt purpose. I know what to share with the world around me, what to keep close except for a trusted few, and what should remain intimate and private. I expand my worldview to better understand how my work weaves into the greater collective. I am applying the power of lessons learned and putting my 
putting faith in my own grace. I'm going to read this two more times. Pedal to the metal, bitches. We are in our sacred work now. I have built this temple of blood and bone. I have learned to trust my boundaries, and so I am now prepared to share my heartfelt purpose. I know what to share with the world around me, what to keep close except for a trusted few, and what should remain intimate and private. I expand my worldview to better understand how my work weaves into the greater collective. I am applying the power of lessons learned and putting faith in my own grace. And I'm going to read that one last time. Pedal to the metal, bitches. We are in our sacred work now. I have built this temple of blood and bone. I have learned to trust my boundaries, and so I am now prepared to share my heartfelt purpose. I know what to share with the world around me, what to keep close except for a trusted few, and what should remain intimate and private. I expand my worldview to better understand how my work weaves into the greater collective. I am applying the power of lessons learned and putting faith in my own grace. That's powerful. Especially for orphans and adoptees, so many of us have been involved in inequitable social contracts that are more about the families that have been in a position where they are relinquishing a child to families who are in a position where they are adopting a child. And so often those boundaries are just so violated. Like there's no personal space, there's no boundaries. And, and of course, take it as it resonates. This isn't the case with everybody, right? Um, but that spell work was just so super sweet and reminding us about all of those orphans and adoptees who have been as involved in the dismantling over the past couple years, the past couple decades, maybe for your whole life and, and rebuilding and, and the dark nights of the soul you've gone through and learning your boundaries. And, and some of you, myself included, have had to dance away to establish those boundaries, dance away from the adoptive families, not because we did not love them, but because the contracts were so inequitable. And that's the kindest way to say it. Each, each person has their different story. You can hear all sorts of um, adoptee activists who are out there sharing their stories. And we've worked so hard to, we've worked so diligently to reestablish healthy boundaries. Uh, you know, it was a mission for me. And, and, and we've learned that we, we want to share certain things with the whole world. And we want to share things with just a trusted few. And then there are some things we want to keep secret. And that's something we, many of us have put ourselves in a position to learn because we wanted to learn. And, and that's happening. This card is a sign that that is happening for you, that you've done the work and it's paying off. And I'm so happy for you and proud of you and thankful for you helping to establish this new earth and close out the old earth. Thank you so much. Heartily, we are grateful. And, and thank you for helping make this world a better place by taking care of you. And then when you're ready, contributing the gifts that you have to the collective that is tremendous and we are so grateful so the guiding message says self-respect is self-love root deeper embrace courage track your impact beyond what is personal are you in your own work act with authority and trust your experience boundaries that's intense. Thank you so much. The Living Altar, Kiki, Ilva, Source, Sun, Pisces. And that is all I am seeing for you in this reading. Thank you so much for helping me breathe life into adoption spirit magic. Heartily, we are grateful. Until next time.
Ciao for now. I love you all.